Beloved ones, we continue looking at the elementary uh, principles. And uh, as we know, uh, this is coming from Hebrews uh, 6, uh, uh, 1 and uh, 2. And uh, we have uh, covered uh, three of the elementary principles uh, so far. And uh, we are remaining with the other three. The last one, we had to, pl- uh, to split it into two. And we even went into activation. Now we are coming to uh, the fourth one. And that is laying on of hands. I must say that laying on of hands... You know, the other ones, it's easy to understand. But when you come to laying on of hands, you're thinking like, why laying on of hands? Because the other ones, you know, you can see that it's somehow like progressing. So you have here, you have got the repentance, and then you have faith towards God. So you repent from whatever you were doing. You focus on God, faith towards God. And then you, are, because you have believed, you are baptized. And after baptized, you, you receive even the power. You receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, fine. And then here, we find the laying on of hands. And after the laying of hands, we find that there's talking about resurrection and we're talking about eternal judgment. So what is this laying on of hands? Why would laying on of hands become a very critical foundational element? What is so important about hands that indeed the word tells us that it is a foundational doctrine that every believer, every Christian needs to understand? Well, let's look at this laying on of hands. Why hands? Now, hands, we use them for almost everything. On our bodies, we use our hands. We comb our hair using our hands. We brush our teeth using our hands. We dress up using our hands. We wear our clothes, our shoes using our hands. Almost everything that has got to do with care of the body, hygiene of the body, we use our hands. What else do we do for recreation? It's about, I can't think of any sport. Think of any sport that you can play without using your hands. Even if it's running, you can't run like this. You have to use your hands to run, whether it is golf, it is tennis, whatever it is, somehow the hands, hands come up to be uh, used. Apart from that, you have almost every industry. Think about any industry that you are in. I am in uh, so many things, but whatever I do, whether you are a lawyer, whether you are a banker, whether you are a doctor, whatever it is in agriculture, whatever field you may think of, somehow we still come back to use our hands. And also connection. We use our hands to connect. Two people have not met for a long time. I know during COVID, we tried a few things we could do with this. It wouldn't last forever. Yeah, we come back to our hands because there's a connection. There's something that happens with hands. Even when somebody are comforting somebody, maybe somebody had, um, you know, know, he's bereaved. When you're comforting them, somehow you put your hand on their shoulder. Our hands are used in many, many things that um, we do. At the start and the end of life, when a a baby is being delivered, we use our hands to deliver that baby. Even when when the time of death comes in, whether you are being buried, you are being cremated, again, it's hands that we use to go through all of this. So hands are very, very critical. You find this even when you come to scripture. So when you look at scriptures, you can go back. If you go to um, uh, Genesis, for instance, then Israel stretched out his hand And this was uh, talking about Jacob. Stretched out his hands. This is in Genesis. What book comes after Genesis? Exodus. Let's go to Exodus. You shall also have the bull brought before the tabernacle of meeting. And Aaron and his sons shall put their hands. After Exodus, what's the next book? I'm hearing Proverbs. Okay, I'll go with it. I'll go with Leviticus. Okay, so we go to Leviticus. Then he shall put his hands. So this laying on the hands continues. Okay, let's try again. After Leviticus, what's the next book? Okay, good, we are together. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man whom the, who is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. After Numbers? Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands. So almost you go through scripture with the, you know, the prophets, you look at the kings, you, know, you see that the laying on of hands continues. You come to the New Testament, you come into Luke, the Bible says, and he laid his hands on her. This was Jesus. So Jesus continues with this laying on of hands. And there are so many scriptures where you find that Jesus 
kept on going, laying on, you know, his hands on many, many, many people. You come into the apostles in Acts chapter 6, verse 6, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. This continues. Timothy, for this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So laying on of hands, we see this. I am not surprised that we have got the doctrine of laying on of hands as a foundational principle, as a foundational element, laying on of hands. What is the significance of laying on of hands? And it's so important, beloved ones, for us. Because the laying on of hands is happening. Even today, it's happening in many places. It's happening every day. Hands are being laid, and they're being laid differently. And because hands are being laid, it's important for you to understand the implications and the impact of laying on of hands. Whether it is you that is laying on hands, or it is you that is being laid on, you have to understand it is very, very very important. So let's, uh, let's move. If we look at the first significance of laying on of hands, I call it impartation. In Deuteronomy 34 verse 9, the Bible says, Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him, so the children of Israel heeded him. Joshua was full of wisdom. Now, I, I just want you to see how, what the scripture says here. Joshua was full of wisdom not because of his experiences, not because of where he had gone, nothing. He was full of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands on him. If you look earlier, you'll find that God had commanded Moses to lay his hands on Joshua. There is an impartation that comes when you lay your hands on someone. You can actually impart what you carry, the grace that you carry. You can actually impart the gift that you carry. You can actually impart. You know, we gain wisdom in so many ways, uh, you know, from the fear of God and from the things that we have experienced and so forth and so on. But there are certain times, beloved ones, when you find yourself in a place like Joshua, where you have to take up this huge responsibility of leading the children of Israel and you do not know what to do. The only thing you can ask for is the wisdom. And that wisdom in this particular case comes in by impartation. For Moses had laid his hands on him. What else do we see? First Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands. The gift which was imparted, it was received by the laying on of hands. So there is an impartation. The elders laid hands and received that gift. Number two, commissioning. So the pictures that you see there, that is when Grace City was starting. So on the 14th of August, 2022, when you're starting Grace City, we had the elders, we had the bishops, we had people coming in, and they laid hands on us. So on day one, myself and Mrs. Z, we were commissioned they came in and laid hands on us and released us. And it is very, very important. And you see this in scripture so many times. When somebody was being commissioned, they laid hands on them and they commissioned them. What does the Bible say in Acts chapter 6, verse um, 5? And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and, you know, all these names are mentioned there, but I want us to go to verse 6, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And what happened? When we were appointed, we also appointed other leaders, and we laid hands on them and commissioned them. 
And we'll be also, um, we have a few leaders that have moved and they've also had a few movements. So we'll be appointing a few more leaders. We'll be announcing that uh, probably next week. And those leaders that have not yet been uh, commissioned, we'll also lay hands on them and we'll commission them. Uh, we have uh, a leaders meeting on the 28th and we'd like all the leaders, both the ones that we are talking to and the existing ones, we are all going to come together on the 28th. Uh, on Saturday, right here, we'll communicate that on the leader's um, uh, chart. Let's see in Acts chapter 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, they didn't end there, and laid hands on them, they sent them their way. So we lay hands to commission. Number three. For blessing. Genesis 48, 14. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's herd, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's herd, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. So just to give you a sense of what had happened here, um, Israel's days had, oh no, um, ha had advanced and he was about to go. And what did Joseph do? He took his two sons. One was Manasseh and one was, um, you know, um, um, Ephraim. So he took Manasseh on his left hand and he took Ephraim on his right, approaching the father. And he did that strategically because when the father is facing him, Manasseh was older. His hand was going to go on Manasseh on this side, right hand, and the left hand was going to go on Ephraim, who was younger. But they come to the father, and what does Israel do? What does Jacob do? He crosses his hands. He puts his right hand on the younger, who was Ephraim on his left, and his left hand on Manasseh, who was the uh, older. And he did that knowingly. But there was a blessing that he was uh, passing. And there was a revelation, and probably maybe I'll talk about this again um, uh, later. But this is something that I want each and every one of us, even when we are blessing, just don't bless unknowingly. Israel knew what he was doing. Israel was able to hear the Lord. He knew exactly that blessing. So it's not just a blessing for the sake of blessing. No, he was passing on the blessing. And Joseph tried to say, no, my father, this one is older, this one is younger. He says, I know, my son, I know. I, if you look at the response from Israel, I know, my son, I know. Many times, sometimes we lay hands carelessly without knowing anything that comes, just lay. Get to the point like Israel that says, I know, my son, I know. So we're talking about hands, they pass on the blessing. We look at Luke chapter 10, verse 13. This is a story that we know very well. This is uh, when the children were being brought uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. I just want to see this. They're not bringing them to him to do anything. They are bringing them to him that he might touch them. They understood the impact and the power that lies in laying on of hands. Then, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms laid hands on them and blessed them. Look, the Lord did not only just take them in his hands. He took them in his hands and laid hands on them. What is so significant? Why is this so important? Let's move on to healing. In many times, now healings have happened in different, different ways. But we see many, many times when healing was being administered that there's a laying on of hands. The Bible says in Luke 4.40, when the sun was setting, all those who had any... Let me just read that again. When the sun was setting, all those who had, I think, that were sick 
with various diseases, brought them to him, and he laid his hands on them. I think there's a word missing there. So he, had, he laid his hands on them. I want us to look at the part where the sick were brought to him, and he laid his hands on them. And you see also that uh, Matthew 9 verse 18 tells us, while he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him. Now, these are people who understood the power of laying on of hands. My daughter just died, but come and lay your hands on her. James 4, 14. If anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. Let us go to Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons and they'll speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink Anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. Everyone who believes. Now, sometimes you're talking about laying on of hands. Sometimes you think it is the preserve of the pastors and the bishops. And it says those who believe. These signs will follow them. And I want us to come to a point where as believers, we understand the power, we understand the authority that we have. There are certain moments when at home yourself, that your child is sick, you stand up with authority and you lay your hands on your wife, on your husband, and you claim that blessing, you claim that authority that you already have, exercise that authority. You lay hands on the sick and the sick will be healed. Amen. Laying on of hands is transference. In the Old Testament, what used to happen was, when if, if I have sinned, I would then get a bullock, bring it, lay my hands on that, and that's a sacrifice, and the understanding is my sins are being transferred, because remember, the wages of sin is death, my sins are being transferred into this animal, and this animal is going to be sacrificed. Then he shall put his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. So when you lay hands, there's a transference that happens. In Leviticus 4, 23 and 24, or if his sin, which he has committed, comes to his knowledge, he shall bring as his offering a kid of the gods, a male without blemish, and he shall lay his hands on the head of the god and kill it. There's a transference that happens when we lay hands. First Timothy 5 22 comes with a warning because of this transference. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in, the, in another person's sins. Keep yourself pure. When, listen, if I have commissioned somebody, I lay hands on them hastily, in a hurry, without knowing even where this person, we, wherever this person is going to go, and whatever they are going to do, I am sharing in that activity. That's why I do not lay hands on anyone hastily. But at the same time, do not allow anyone to lay hands on you hastily. Amen. Sometimes we take our heads to anyone, oh, here, again, here, and we get the anointing, and somebody said, like, until your head becomes like an engine with a lot of oil, and your hair comes out because of the hands that have been laid over you. Now, a few things I want us to understand. I did not put these on the slides, but this is so important. When you lay hands, there is an exchange that happens. That exchange can be both ways. 
You can lay hands, like, it, like we have seen here, where there's an animal, you lay hands, and the sin that you carry goes onto the animal, and the animal is killed. Virtual can also move from the person that is being laid hands on to the person that is laying hands. You remember the woman with an issue of blood? She said, if only I can touch the home of his garment. Paul, full of anointing. People were going to Paul with the handkerchiefs to place handkerchiefs to get the virtue from Paul and they take it to the sick that they had at home. And the Bible said the sick were healed. So there is an exchange that happens. Power, virtue can move both ways. And now I know that can be scary because then you're saying, oh my God, how many people have laid hands on me? What has happened? You know, did it go both ways and everything else? Listen, you know, I, I love the word of God and I love the power that God has given to us. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 7. Uh, if we can be able to go there, our media team, Hebrews 7 verse 7. Hebrews 7, he says, without contradiction, without any dispute, the lesser is blessed by the greater. Without any contradiction, if we can be able to have it, without any dispute. So it says, there's no dispute about this fact. The lesser is blessed by the greater. Light and darkness, which one is greater? It is light. When you bring light in darkness, the darkness disappears. When you have, listen, even when you're praying for people, had it not been for this, then we're not going to be praying for people, right? Because you're going to pray for somebody who is so sick with so many, and you're saying, hey, if I lay hands on him, these diseases are going, no! The lesser is blessed by the greater. There's no way this disease is going to, and that is why it's important for you to know who you are. You will know who you are. You know what you carry. And because you know what you carry, all this fear is not going to be there because you know it and you know it. Listen, you know, sometimes we, we, when we don't know who we are, we are even scared of devils and demons and everything else. When you know who you are, they will tell you in that room it is haunted. You will go in that haunted room with a lot of authority and you are saying any demons that are here are going to scatter because I know what I'm carrying. There was a time, and I'm telling you, I experienced it, personally experienced it. There was a time I was in Chipata, and there was this story. I was going in the hospitals with a few people. We were going praying, you know, you know uh, for people from one uh, hospital bay to another one. And then there was a commotion, and then we heard, oh, yeah, yeah, there's a witch who, who has fallen, and they have kept them in this room, and so on. And people were so scared to go there, and others were going watching. So a few of us, I think, we are, I joined in with a few other people, about 12 or 13 I said, let me go and see this witch. So we went there, and the poor old lady, to be honest, I don't know. So there, that was the story, that she fell, they took her and everything, and she was now at the hospital in a corner somewhere. The police were there. So we went into the room. When we entered that room, people were asking her questions. And I'm saying this with all humility, and I'm talking to young people because, you know, we have to be on fire. As youths, we have to be on fire. We don't have to wait until we grow up to a certain level. Just move with the fire. And I remember that time. I was so deep in prayer. We were praying and fasting. That wish that was sitting there, out of many people, singled me out and said, and said in Nyanja, Ah, Nangaba Janivandan. Out of, and I was standing there and I was looking at her straight in the eyes. I don't know why she asked that question. But I want to believe that when you have the anointing, when you have the presence of God, when you are moving in that authority, listen to me, there's no devil that can be able to touch you. There's no devil that can be able to touch you. You have to know yourself. And I'm encouraging you, beloved ones, even, I've said this before, even in your home, when you find your home being attacked, stand up. You know, there are times to be soft 
And there are times to be aggressive. There are times, even we have pets, we have three dogs. I, you know, there are dogs that are so, now, you know, the younger ones are being trained and so forth and so on. They're told, sit, sit, come, come, and everything else. Let me tell you, when the dog is not moving, I'm not going to say, ah, Luto, move. Luto, no. Luto, come. No, 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 no. no. If it's not moving, Luto, come on, go out. The moment you saw that the dog knows that you are not, actually, you are serious, you're not joking. Even when it comes to dealing with some of these things that come our way, be aggressive in the spirit. Be aggressive in the spirit. It's a war. Go there and say, you know, the Bible says that Jesus cried out with a loud voice. There are certain things you have to cry out with a loud voice. And there's no devil that can touch you. Amen. So, the lesser is blessed by the greater. And that's the reason why, even when the woman with an issue of blood went to Jesus to touch, power had to move from Jesus to this woman. And, this, and Jesus says, who touched me? Because he felt power leaving him. And on that one as well, beloved ones, please note, especially those in ministry, we always have to go back to drink and to drink and to get a refilling and get a refilling. Because as we are laying hands on people, there's power that moves out. Listen, if somebody wants to come up here and I am holding their hand, I am laying my hand and bringing them up, there is strength that I am exiting. I have to go and replenish. There's no way that I can just be pulling people up, pulling people up, pulling people up without me running to go and be replenished. Find a place where you're always going back to being replenished. So number one, remember there is an exchange and exchange can be both ways. On the exchange being both ways, for those that really believe they will be like a woman with an issue of blood. That would say, you know, sometimes people do these things without even knowing, and because they do not know, it doesn't even impact. There are people who know and say, you know what? I, I am inspired by Pastor Hara. I am in inspired by what he can. If only I can shake his hands. But if you know how to shake his hands, and as you're shaking his hands, you are tapping into that grace. I have seen people, oh, I greeted the president. Oh, I'm not going to wash my hands. I greeted the president. What did you have in your mind when you're greeting the president? Number two, I mentioned that the lesser is blessed by the greater. Now, with all of these things, then one would wonder and say, he, so what happens? I'm touching so many people everywhere where I go. Am I tapping things? Am I getting this? What is happening? Why is it that you know, people have laid hands on me so many times? Listen, the Bible tells us it has to be done in faith. That's why Jesus kept on saying, your faith has healed you. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally to everyone without reproach he shall be granted unto you but let him ask in faith without doubting for anyone who doubts let him not suppose he will receive anything from the Lord he is double minded so even when hands are being laid if you have doubt you will not receive anything if you have no faith, you will not receive anything. It's very important for you to be able to have faith. And for you as well that is carrying anything, you have to position yourself at a space where you are either allowing that to go or you're not allowing it. Because if I am praying for anybody and I am praying without any faith, I'm not releasing anything, it is just a ritual and nothing is happening there. It's important for us to be able to have faith. The things of God, with the walk that we walk, is a walk of faith. I want to speak to the women. There are so many things sometimes that we are exposed to. Some things we see them, some things we don't. You are protected by God. You stand. You know who you are. You stand and walk in that authority. 
I know it. Even traditionally, when uh, a woman is expecting, they usually say, no, no, don't allow people to touch, you know, your, 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 your womb, uh, and so forth and so on. Now, listen to me. When you go to hospitals, there are so many people, there are nurses, there are this that will be touching you, there is this and everything else. Don't depend on, don't let anyone touch. Depend on the power that you carry. Depend on the power that you carry and get to a level to say, you know what? The lesser is always blessed by the greater. I am the greater. If you touch me, the fire of God touches you. And the fire of God touches you. You know, faith, I talked about faith. You know, sometimes everyone believes in something. I hear we get this and we understand it. There are some people who believe more in witchcraft than the power of God. Your faith, your belief is so much in the negative. Why are you not believing the positive? Why are you believing so much, so much fear on this other side? And because of the negative belief, what you are believing is what is coming because you believe it. Don't believe that. Believe in the power of God. Believe in the strength of God. Believe in the authority that you have. When you walk in any place, know that you are carrying something that is greater. When you walk in the boardroom, know that you are carrying something that is greater. When you walk in the hospital, you are carrying something that is greater. When you go to your village, your village ancestors, they should be scampering in different directions because you have come in that village. Don't go in your village and you are hiding in a corner somewhere. Ah, and listening carefully at night, something is going to come on the roof. Come on, child of God. No. No. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved ones, we'll proceed to activation. We're going to put in practice what we have just talked about. Hallelujah. With understanding, even when people are praying uh, for you, Come believing that you are receiving what you're believing God for. If you ask God, he's not going to give you anything that is going to hurt you. Now, I'll ask the worship team to come. We're just going to get into a time of our prayer and impartation. On these areas here, I said, look out for blessings and watch out for the implications of laying on of hands in the areas of impartation, commissioning, blessing, healing, and transformation, and, and transference. Today, we are going to cover impartation. We are going to cover blessing. We are going to cover healing as well. Commissioning, we'll do the commissioning when we appoint the uh, leaders that are coming to join in. On impartation, or let me start with the healing part. If you are here and there's something that you've been dealing with, we're going to reserve that last section there for those that need healing. I'll ask the elders to come in. Uh, we've got anointing oil as well. We want to bring this to an end. If there's any ailment that you have, let's just believe God. And joining the elders, please feel free to move across. I'll score in different sections. Elders, you can actually come in front. So elders, feel free to move across. But on the healing part, I also want to call, if you are here in this place and you know that you have enjoyed good health, you know that God has blessed you with good health. You have just got this good health. You have never been admitted in hospital. You have not been suffering all oh, this migraine, this what, and everything else. I want you to come and join the elders and just impart that healing on other people as well. You are going to be there. I'm also going to ask, we're going to do impartation for those that are in business. If you are in business, and you just want to go to the next level. You, are, you have been struggling with your business. Whether you're struggling to start a business, you're struggling to find a breakthrough, you're struggling. If you start something, it just goes down. You put your money in this business, it goes down. You put in that, we are going to pray over you. And at the same time, 
I'll ask from the congregation, if you know and you know it, that you're a good business person and you have seen God doing great things, you are running a successful business. I mean a business that you are proud enough to be able to say, I am proud of what God has been able to do. Yes, I'm not talking about worldly pride. I'm talking about godly boasting in the Lord and saying, the Lord has been able to do this for me. And I would want to pass it on. I want to place my hands on somebody. Somebody who has been struggling. They should not be struggling. They can be that impartation. So the second group, please just come in here. The third one is for those that are students. You might be struggling with school. You might be having fears and anxiety in academics, whether it is in primary school, secondary school, university, master's, doctorate, just come through. At the same time, for each one of these groups, if you are there, you know you are good. There's people who are just so blessed. They don't study, but they pass. They, they are so good. Even when they study, they go and even get 100%, 99 You know that you're just blessed in academics. Or maybe you have overcome challenges in academics and now you've been able to go through. You want to impart that on somebody, just come through and we'll be able to impart that on somebody. The next group here, it is for those that are working and you have not been making progress. You have been trying and trying and trying and you are not making progress. You have tried everything and you see others coming in I want to call on all those that are executives, that are CEOs. Like I said, for the elders, you can go across. We just come and lay hands on you. And we speak that blessing on you in Jesus' name. And the last one are those that are looking, just crying for spiritual gifts. And just say, I want my spiritual gift to be activated. We are going to be on the, my left this side. The worship team will be ministering and feel very free. And even in among us ourselves, even in among us ourselves as leaders, if you see there's somebody who is carrying something that you'd want, that impartation, this is a time of ministry. Just go and say, speak on my life and receive that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.